Let's give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Please join us 
the call to worship. The day of God is coming. Lift up your voices. Cry out with the strength God provides. We await God's coming day with anticipation. We seek for peace and patience God provides. Comfort, comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to my suffering people. We will prepare the way for one who is coming. We look forward to baptism in the Spirit. God will feed us like a shepherd. God will gather us in gentle, caring arms. God's hand is upon us in blessings. We are welcomed by God's steadfast love. Now I'd like to invite Corey to believe that all of you can just come forward for the light of the captain. Just take a look at your liturgy. Thank you. 
about do you all adore thee? We are grateful unto you for your Son, Jesus Christ, our liberator. We are grateful for the Holy Spirit, our advocate, and the cleanser of our souls. O oh God, we thank you this day for causing the sun to rise, for us to receive a reasonable portion of health and strength, that we might lift our voices in song and our hopes in your freedom. We adore thee, O God, because you are a prayer hearing and prayer answering God. We adore thee because when we try and fail, you bid us try again. We thank you, God, for you are on the side of the oppressed, that you mourn with those who are under attack. That you are a God who heard the cries of slaves and set them free from a mighty age. And you heard the cries of our ancestors and set them free from a cruel period of slavery. And God, we adore thee because freedom has not yet fully come, either here or in other places around the world where people yearn to enjoy that freedom. So you sent us Jesus as a model for how we might be new creatures and change the world so that the prayer we pray each Sunday would come true, that there would be on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, comfort all who mourn God. Hold out our hearts as we grieve. Give us hope in hopeless situations. Bless those who are recovering from difficulties. Help those of us who struggle during this period of the year, either from seasonal affective issues or from memories of things that have happened this time and times past. God, you know all about us, and still you notice us, still you love us. And still you intend that we might live a blessed life. And now join me, contributing your voice as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us rise and exchange the peace of Christ with God. Peace of the Lord be with you to all of our friends who are on Zoom Peace and our family. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. I'm glad to see you. Oh, it's a struggle. Oh, no, it's a struggle to get here. Freezing in here. It feels like the wind is blowing. I know.
was
I'm here, of course, as part of your neighborhood care activities person. And in the bulletin, for those of you online and in the church, I have posted that we, I have tickets for the Wiz and the Michael Jackson music. Anyone wishing to go to the Wiz, I need to have your commitment and your money by next Sunday. I have to turn in all monies by the 22nd, so I want to make sure that I have all your tickets. Uh, there are no children's tickets, discounted tickets because the tickets that we have have already been discounted and they are $94 for orchestra. So all tickets have already been discounted a lot. Also, um, it's in the bulletin, but this Sunday's Kwanzaa. You know, every this Sunday we have a celebration and uh, it's potluck, it's the end of the year, it's New Year's Eve. So we hope you all come out, bring a dish. We try to have something special for you. We hope to see you next Sunday and this Sunday. Thank you. I wanted, usually the second Sunday in December, the choir always has the concert. But this year, we decided to do something different. We had a member that suggested that we So we're going to go to and have church today. Unfortunately, a lot of places that we wanted to go, uh, they have COVID. So we, couldn't. So we ended up with the back to Places, but we will um, show uh, them our gratitude and love for them. I don't want to care if anybody else would like to join us, you are perfectly welcome to do so. Um, do we have any birthdays in the month of December? Oh, happy birthday. Can you stand up and have a birthday, people? Uh,
Whom the Son has set free. Is truly free in the Amen. Amen. Sure, say amen one more time. Amen. Now say amen like you mean amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God.
common meal and the praise. The word of the Lord. Let us inquire and explore under the title, Take Me to the River. Take me to the river. We believe that the sacrament of baptism transforms us into new creatures. That whether it is sprinkled as we do in the Reformed tradition, whether you are submerged as happens in Baptist and other traditions, the same thing applies and the same thing You become a new creature. As Peter explains it and describes it here, you receive the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven, and you begin a new life, following in the pattern of Jesus Christ. And that is what can save you from the sick and stupid culture that we are surrounded by. Why would Peter use those two words, sick and stupid, to describe the culture that they were living in in the ancient Near East? He's not talking about 2023, he's talking about the first century. And he's saying that those who would come to Christ, those who would be submerged in the waters of baptism, were surrounded by, but saved from a sick and stupid culture. Because it was a culture of colonialism. It was a culture that was infused with European supremacy in the form of the Roman Empire. It was because Peter and those he was preaching to were living in occupied Palestine in the first century. Under the power of Rome, who had the most fearsome army in the known world at the time. Rome, which was extracting all of the wealth from the communities of Jerusalem and Israel and impoverishing the people, kicking them out into the streets, foreclosing on their homes, having them to pay huge tax debts that they could not pay, and when they could not pay, they lost their property, whether it was a home or a ship that they used for fishing that made their livelihood and how they ate. It was a sick and stupid culture. That taught that the people of Israel were inferior to Romans or like animals to human beings. Those ideas were enforced by the Roman legions that patrolled the streets harassing and intimidating. They were the advanced troops when people were evicted from their homes. The Roman soldiers would come and enforce the eviction orders and kick them out. Romans who got bored never tired of messing with the people of Israel, humiliating them, raping them, 
intimidating them. Oh, it was a sick. Stupid culture. And the religious leaders in their own community decided it was better to live with the Romans than try to resist them. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law perverted the law. They didn't teach people to resist their occupation or fight for their freedom. They told the people they had to go along to get along. And somehow, and even though God was a God of the oppressed, and Jesus was a savior and a liberator. Those weren't the ideas that they thought they would teach in the synagogue that might stir the people up and make the Romans mad. So they collapsed. Try to keep the natives being restless. Talking about a sin and a stupid culture. For some of the citizens who wanted to do a little bit better than the others could sign up to be tax collectors. Matthew was a tax collector. And the job of the tax collectors was to collect from the people what Rome wanted from them in terms of their money. The taxes were high, and most people couldn't pay. And some of the tax collectors were corrupt and skimmed off of the people's givings and then reported that they had given less than they actually had. That would mean a visit from the Roman legions. Oh. And so Peter says, change your life. Because there's a logic to oppression that becomes internalized in the oppressed. Where they begin to believe the false narrative of their inferiority. And hearing the collaborative preaching in the synagogues, they begin to believe that it's better to take the safe bet and not make the Romans mad by resisting Rome. And when that happens, then something other than God becomes the thing that you're expected to pledge your allegiance to. Something other than God gives you your marching orders for your life. Jesus is no longer the head of your life, but Caesar is the head of your life. Peter looking at people who've been buffeted by these things says, change your life. We're going to take you to the river. We're going to baptize you, submerge you in the waters of baptism and make of you a new creature. We're going to topple the idolatries that Rome and false teachers have erected in your hearts. So that you can make God 
first in your life. We're going to take you to the river. Have you waded in the water so that God will trouble the waters of your soul and set you free? Unstop your ears. Let loose your tongue so that you can live as the free people God intended when God made you. That's the example that Jesus set. How to live lives of dignity and integrity even with your back against the wall. That's the Jesus who is liberator, not your savior, but liberator. We are as he was in the world. That's the expectation. But you gotta be baptized. You gotta be filled with the Holy Spirit. You got to work out your salvation, as Paul once said, with fear and trembling. So that you don't let the state decide what kind of person you're going to be. You don't let the military or the police decide what per kind of person you're going to be. You don't let prosperity preachers or Christian nationalists or Christian capitalists decide what kind of person you're going to be or which God you're going to serve. That's why we take you to the river and wash you down. I got to read this to sing you off the list. Take me to the river. I just, I used to love me some Alvin. Anybody else here? It's it just me. Love me. Take me to the river and wash me down. Won't you cleanse my soul? Put my feet on the ground. Cleanse my soul of the racism. Cleanse my soul of the misogyny. Cleanse my soul of the homophobia. Cleanse my soul of the capitalist idea, fantasy, or I'm just a few uh, smart choices away from being a billionaire. No, you ain't. It's a fantasy. You where your values should be. In the hour they would dance, he saw this brother in white, the color of purity, who wants to meet God at the judgment and be able to say, I haven't lied, I haven't. I haven't gambled, I haven't, I haven't. I've lived as a new creature. I'm being transformed. I saw the precision of the dance and also the, the voices, the singing that seems to call out of him these things. I can't help but think about how 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 we in, in the historic black church do see baptism as a transformation. And how that tradition began during the slave trade. When the transformation, the taking to the river, the submergence meant that when you came up, you were no longer slaves. You were children of God. Becoming Christian, but becoming new creatures saved from the ravages of slavery. We weren't niggers anymore. And we weren't slaves anymore. 
Jesus. In a country that wants a dictatorship, at least half of the citizenry want a white man to be unchallenged dictator of the land. Who are willing to overlook the fact he presided over the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people because he wouldn't do anything about COVID-19. Except telling you to drink bleach. And some actually did. A sick and stupid culture. Those of us who have been baptized have been taken to the river. God has washed us down. God still cleanses souls and can put our feet on solid ground. Now, we knew about that, he can say about it in the love song, but it's more like a breakup song. But the message was still there. Oh, and how did the people respond to it? 3,000 said, sign me up. I want out. I want to get out of this sick and stupid culture. But we are always having to continue to revive ourselves because the totalizing environment keeps pulling as much as we try. So what were the three things that they did? And this is where we'll go. What did they commit to? Right? It said they committed to the teaching of the apostles, the life together, the common meal, and the prayers. So they committed to building community together. They committed to the study of the preaching of the apostles. We have the Bible. That's what we commit ourselves to doing as we continue to become new creatures. We follow none but the God of the oppressed. And we have as our model Jesus Christ, as it says in the first sentence of the preamble, Savior and Liberator. That's who we are using as our pattern for how to be. And the life together. So, so those 3,000 were called into a community and who moved to community. I am because we are we are because I am, where they could increase their wellness in their relationships and their wellness in the wider community. That's the second commitment we make. The first is to study, as it says in the preamble, with our first commitment toward God in worship and study. The second commitment is to the building of sacred community and Ubuntu experience of increasing wellness and not believing the lie that we can live life on our own. Another product of the sickness culture. And then finally, the common people and that people would sit at a table with one another and that they would pray. This is how we work out our salvation with fear and truth. Never sure that we, we don't need help. We could make a wrong step, but that we don't need anyone else's sin. That we can just march through life, uh, just doing me. Uh, that there's a need to be a part of a community. 
in that case, there were 3,000 who were encouraged to build this new community. And, and in our case, the numbers, both here and online, and the other partners that we are with are a part of this beloved community, we are charged to do it. So we close. that it is through baptism that we can experience the beauty of being. The beauty of being washed down. The beauty of being forgiven. The beauty of having our feet placed on solid ground with the feet of others. And through those others to continue the work. Want to be ready and we get ready through the work of baptism. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Faith means faith in community. walking together in newness of life. Faith means realizing we haven't figured this whole thing out about our transformation, so we need other people to be with, to walk with, to learn with, in order to continue to transform into our Jesus likeness. And if you, whether it's here or online, need community, for that becoming a new creature. We want to offer Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church. If you're online in the chat, just put interested. Or you can send an email to me at teachelder at gmail.com. And let us walk together. Amen. Our second is about giving. I'll see this talk about at the end of the year giving a video. And we are making for something over, above, over and above for those of you who are members. We received an email explaining encouraging generosity at this particular end of the year time. We would invite you to keep that horrible uh, time. Get back to that. It's time of year we celebrate the three wise men who came to give gifts to the baby Jesus. And now that Jesus has gone on and become God, he said that we are in We want to still give those gifts. So remember that when giving you gifts today.
Enjoy treasures of 